The great thing about the passive house is it, is it largely eliminates fuel poverty in affordable housing because it, it makes the energy use much lower and therefore affordable. In the UK, we are facing a significant housing crisis in addition to more and more people living in fuel poverty. So we desperately need to build more affordable housing without sacrificing energy efficiency and carbon goals. But is it reasonable, indeed, is it possible to do both? Well, we've come here to Halton in Lancaster to visit the Loonwalk housing development to see what one community have done to tackle this problem in their area. Welcome to the Everything Electric show. Like Everything Electric? You'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric expos around the world. Next up, we're in London and Harrogate. Remember, energy and transport professionals go for free on the first day. A key factor contributing to the housing crisis is the lack of houses, and the UK government has pledged to build 180,000 new homes by 2026, but 8.5 million people currently have some sort of unmet housing need. Many individuals and families are finding it increasingly difficult to find homes within their means, and there's also been a substantial decrease in the availability of social housing. And let's not forget the people who have a home but are currently living in fuel poverty, which according to the UK government in 2022 was 3.26 million people in England alone. In simple terms, fuel poverty relates to those households that must spend a high proportion of their household income to keep their home at a reasonable temperature. There are three important elements in determining whether a household is fuel poor. A household's income, their fuel costs, and their energy consumption, which is affected by the energy efficiency of the home. For example, if your home isn't very airtight, heat will be lost more quickly, meaning having to spend more money to heat it. Having identified the lack of housing and the poor standard of the housing available in Halton, the Loon Walk community-led development came about. There's been about 350 new houses built in the village um, in the last 10 years and we increasingly got fed up with the fact that it was much of it wasn't the right size for, the, for what, the, what the community needed. The, stand, the standards were pretty lousy. Um, we tried talking to developers about, about this and whether you can improve this and why aren't you providing the, the, the designated amount of affordable housing and there's always arguments about viability and you know, oh we can't afford this etc. And so we, got, we just got angry and frustrated. Um, we had we was a group of us living in co-housing here. Uh, we, we, we knew how beneficial co-housing, this type, this type of housing was with the, the low energy standard, the low, very low energy use from passive house standards. And so in the end, we got fed up with trying to talk to the developers and, and we, we had a bit of serendipity came along. And the serendipity was that there was a site just up the road here. There was money that the city council had remarkably from, from government for what was called community-led housing. Um, that they could give grants for and we could we could qualify as a for community led housing if we set up a, a community land trust and uh, there was evidence that the local community was very heavily very heavily involved that gave us the confidence if you like to say okay let's just let's just do it ourselves and do what we want and so and so we the clt was the recommended way of doing that and and we we set we set up the clt in late 17 early eight, early 18 with some Support, support funding from the City Council, who were very supportive, the housing people were very supportive of the idea. And it all happened, and the rest is, the rest is history, if you like. So what is a community land trust? Community land trusts, or CLTs, are democratic, not-for-profit organisations that own and develop land for the benefit of the community. We, we wanted to set the standard for what was going to be built. So we, set, we said it's got, to be, it's got to be passive house. Because you know the, the aim of the CLT fundamentally is that in, in, in the transition for climate change that we need, we have to bring the poorest people in society with us. We have to, we have to make it practical and affordable for everybody. And so it's really, really important that we, that we put this, this standard onto, onto um, affordable housing as well as other, any other forms of housing. So that was a, a fundamental aim. But we then wanted to partner with the housing association who knew how to do all this design and planning and management um, to make it actually happen. And that key decision to go into partnership with somebody who knows how to do this stuff 
was absolutely vital. That was really important. They had the capacity to set things up and get it organised. They had systems already in place. They had the greater financial capacity for funding. They had good access to Homes England grant funding, which is a key to affordable housing provision. And if you're going to run affordable housing long term, you have to be what's called a registered provider, which they are because they're, they're regulated with a, by, by, by a social so social landlord regulator. The Community Land Trust are the freeholder of where we stand now, um, but South Lakes Housing are the, the long-term leaseholder. We have a 150-year lease with the Community Land Trust to ensure that the long-term management of these homes is ongoing. Um, that lease means that we've got shared ownership properties here, but we've also got rented properties here, um, and this whole communal area will be long-term managed by us at South Lakes Housing. The Loom Walk development is made up of 13 affordable rented homes and 7 shared ownership ones and they're all accredited to a passive house standard meaning that they can achieve a high degree of thermal comfort using a very low amount of energy for heating and hot water and in fact they generally use around 90% less energy for that heating and hot water than UK standard homes meaning that their running costs are exceptionally low. Now simply put, a passive house is a highly insulated building that minimises heat loss, reduces air leakage, incorporates mechanical ventilation and harnesses solar energy. But for the beady-eyed among you, you'll notice that there is a letterbox, which is something that would typically break that air tightness that you would expect in a passive house. So these homes, they have an, they're made of an airtight block with a porch in the front of them. And that has the benefit of being able to completely seal the home whilst also providing a suitable access point um, for the housing association to come and maintain these properties. The other thing that's so fabulous about this is that of course you've got this wonderful technology making these homes extremely affordable to run but you'll notice that all of the parking is kept to the edges meaning that you have ideally a wonderful community feel by having a shared space in front of the homes as well. So the great thing about the passive house is it, is it largely eliminates fuel poverty in affordable housing because it, it makes the energy use much lower and therefore affordable. Because in, in conventional houses where you're paying so much money for energy, you may be able to afford the rent because it's been set low, but you can't afford to heat it. The evidence in this kind of housing is that people are happier. They go into rent arrears less because they can afford their, ener their energy and therefore the housing association is also happier because they actually have tenant, tenants who are more comfortable in, in living in the house and give them less, and give them less problems. And so you, you, it's people and planet in the, same, in, the same, in the same packet, if you like, the same idea. The contractor that ended up winning the scheme was somebody that we had a, a good relationship with. They had never built passive house homes before, and neither had we. Um, we were both kind of holding hands through it together, but also they bought with them their supply chain and the, the local subcontractors that would tend to work within this area anyway. And obviously it was a big part, part for them that they didn't want to have to go out and find, you know, new people or new subcontractors. So basically the site manager um, and representatives from Tyson Construction put themselves through what they would say a PhD in passive house in like a week. And they got the relevant qualifications to be able to then upskill any subcontractor that was on site. And throughout that, I think we've, up, we've upskilled 23 subcontractors in the area, and we've provided over a thousand training days. Um, and that is through apprenticeships, with people coming on through the subcontractors. It's through events that we've hosted on the site. Every month throughout the different stages, we'd have different people coming and having a look at what we were doing. So I think that's been great at sharing the knowledge locally and in, in throughout the whole Northwest, really. One of the surprises that we discovered was that You'd have thought that when you build a HACCP house, it automatically gets an A or an A plus on an EPC regulation, which is, what, which is the way that the um, building industry is thinking about energy efficiency. But it doesn't. We struggle to get a B rating on, pass on, on our passive houses here, which is completely crazy. And it's because the ideas were thought out 10 years ago. They haven't, they haven't, updated, they haven't upda updated with the technology. And most of the, th the good things that a, that a passive house provides don't get any marks. In, in, in EPC, which is completely crazy. So there's a lot of regulatory change that we, that we need to make the whole process, our whole process much easier. And what we're now doing in the Valley is we're now planning to take the story out to parish councils around the Valley, all of whom, all of whom have affordable housing problems in most of the villages, and seeing if we can find opportunities where we can help them try and do, try and do the same. 
When it comes to addressing the housing crisis and fuel poverty, passive homes just make so much sense. And it's been amazing to see that here in action at Loom Walk. But the other thing that's been absolutely incredible is to see the ripple effect of this project and to see what happens when the right people with the right passion come together and prove what's possible. Together they can shape policy, prove the regulatory framework that needs to exist, focus on upskilling and just show that this is a model that should be replicated all over the country.